Pretty and Souls, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather. I'm an intuitive artist, author, coach, counselor, animal communicator, energy healer, channeler, psychic medium. And I'm on a mission to empower and embolden others to connect with their divine radiant light. One of the ways I do that, one of my favorite ways to do that is with a monthly energy forecast. For April, I think even though there's so much content about it out there on the interwebs, if you will, we would be remiss to not talk about just the fact that these eclipses are coming up. So if you're not aware, there's a lunar eclipse coming and then there's a solar eclipse coming. And if you are astrologically or astronomically, it's gonna say gastronomically, I'm gastronomically minded because I'm hungry. If you're astronomically minded, these are some pretty big events. I don't put a lot of weight in that. I do think they have some significance. And when we're looking at the energies that they're kind of churning up, that's how I look at it. It's like somebody takes a stick to a pond and just starts churning stuff up. So they are churning up um, what is connected to the houses that they're coming in on. So for the lunar eclipse, it is Libra energy. And for the solar eclipse, it's Aries energy. So that's to boil it down and for those who do astrology give me some grace it's not my strongest thing but that is relationships and kind of like I want to say hot-headed authority but, but your sense of self and feeling empowered and taking steps and taking charge for yourself so the way I look at it and the way I'm kind of framing it when I have conversations about both eclipses and the eclipse portal, if you will, which is kind of a scary word when you use that, but it's this period of time and eclipses, we, we can kind of feel their energy up to a year on either side. They just become more potent right now as we are approaching those events. But in short, and this is not even the monthly forecast, but it, it informs part of it. So I wanted to bring it up for that reason. Looking at the energy of where are you selling yourself out? And I watched a talk the other day and somebody bottom lined it even more than that and it caught my attention. So I'm gonna share it here. Where are you prostituting yourself? Where are you inverting distorting yourself for someone's approval, for someone's connection, for someone's attention, for your own attention? Like where are you folding in over yourself or crumpling yourself up like a ball of paper because you are not presenting your authentic self? And for those who have been here for a while, you know, authentic self, like when I say your divine radiant light, that to me is what that is. That's your authenticity, that's you as a soul. So where are you not taking you in all your glorious light and your foibles and your humanness, because we all have that, and where are you not presenting all of that? Looking at those situations, seeing if, you know, the old, how's that working out for you kind of thing. Is it working for you? Because this is the period of time at the individual level and the collective level where the ways in which we transacted our relationships with self, with others, with institutions, not working anymore. Because we have not shown up in a lot of those spaces fully as our sovereign selves. So if you see the energy of that coming up for you, it's a time to I would say it's a time to drag it out, but it's more like it's a time that it is being dragged out um, for you to look at and review. And all that means is that's your opportunity to change, to step more fully into your truth. So I kind of picture it as if you look at like a stage where maybe there's gonna be a play on this stage, but you're backstage, so you're about to go out on the stage. And as you walk out, you're kind of still in the darkness until you hit that spotlight. So the audience can't really see you. They kind of see that you're coming, but until you hit that light that is fully, truly you, no one really sees who you are. And sometimes we like, <laughs> we like to stay all the way backstage. We like to leave the theater entirely or we like to just kind of sit on the edge of that spotlight. And I don't mean spotlight is like, you have to be out, you have to get a you know, YouTube channel, you have to broadcast yourself. I just mean standing as you 
in all of the situations in your life. And we all tuck bits of ourselves away from time to time because it might not be comfortable, we might get judged, we might get ridiculed, we might judge ourselves. That's the tricky one, right? But all of that is coming to a head as a result of these eclipses. And then with the lunar eclipse, it's the energy of, all right, someone else has been in charge for a while and I may be railed against it. And this could be at, at a relationship level too. It could be bigger. Um, but now it's like you've been given the car keys yourself. Now what are you going to do? So if you're looking at that through the lens of your authenticity, once you find that, or re I say remember it, I often say that we kind of excavate it too. Once you find it, reunite with it, then what? Now what do I do? Now what kind of choices do I make in my life? Now what kind of people do I welcome in? What kind of energy do I permission or not permission and really feeling like you're in the driver's seat of that energy? So those are kind of the eclipses. What it feels like to me and the word that wanted to come through for the month of April was distillation. So it is this purification of all these different bits of yourself. So it, it extends beyond just the relationship issues and the um, authority empowerment stuff. That's a piece of it. That's the eclipse stamping its energy, eclipses stamping their energy on it. But beyond that, we're really looking at this distillation and this purification of self and we've been on this path incrementally for a while now. So to me, it kind of also feels like, I don't know if you all played this as a kid or if you have kids or grandkids who do this, but the game that you would play in swimming pools, Marco Polo, where two people are, you know, you have your eyes closed, you say Marco, you listen for your friend to say Polo and you try to swim over and find them just based on the sound of it. To me, this is gonna sound weird, but to me it feels like we're doing that with bits of ourselves. Like we're calling out, where am I? Who am I? What's my purpose? And we're like grappling. We hear something, we feel something, we sense something far away, but we're kind of grappling to pull it in. And it's that call and answer energy that to me looks like distillation, where you're kind of boiling something up and then it condenses back down into something else. And when we look at that and the evolution of that for a soul and throughout a lifetime, every different aspect of you has a different boiling point, so to speak. So it's, it's gonna hit that revelation or it's gonna come up for examination, review, transformation where it goes back to become something else at different times. So it's not like, whew, I walked through this dark night of the soul and I'm good, patched up, I'm done. It's a process. We keep, I'm picturing, it, if you don't know, I'll try to find a little video I can put in here, but like a beaker and the there's water in the beaker, it gets boiled, it evaporates and it comes back down a tube into another container. So that's us. We are having things be brought to a boiling point collectively, again, and for us individually, so that they get reshaped and reformed, distilled, purified, back into something else. So I wanna pause here and play for you the channeled message that came through, because there's a little bit of a, I said an activity visualization for you in that. So I'll be back after that in just a minute. Hello, bright and beautiful beings. We would ask you to consider that for the energy coming toward you, around you, through you in the next few weeks, to consider transformation. For this is a time of potential significant growth for you. We would also ask that you remember change is inevitable, transformation is a choice. 
and it will be up to you how much transformation you seek for yourselves. If you were to envision it as walking up to a buffet, you can have a small portion, a medium portion, a large portion, or you may choose to walk away entirely. It is all up to you and there is no choice that is incorrect for your soul's path. They are only options. We would also remind you at this time, something we've spoken of in the past, is the idea of keeping your eyes on your own paper. As you look around you, you may see loved ones, friends, colleagues, those you watch taking significant steps, significant changes, fundamentally altering who they are in the world. Do not take that as an urge for you to change, to grow or adapt if you do not organically feel called to do so. You will all in some way, shape or form receive the nudge, the prompt to change, but it will not be external. So as those around you walk through change, be there, support them, encourage them, but do not feel that that is necessarily a catalyst for your growth. One of the things we would like you to consider as you are walking through the next few weeks is that you are beautiful, radiant, stunning agents of transformation in each and every breath. We often talk about change and transformation as being really an uprooting or a reorganization, a restructuring of who you are at the core. And we would remind you that you do that with every breath. You are intaking what is around you through your inhale, running it through your physical vessel of your body, and breathing it back out into the world, changed, molecularly different as you breathe it out in your exhalation. The next few weeks may feel bumpy and choppy and uncertain for many of you. It may feel as though there are really large choices coming up for you. And again, if this is not you, that does not mean you have missed anything or you are on the quote unquote wrong path. It is just not your time yet. But if you are facing some of those big doorways, those fundamental changes and shifts for yourself, we would like to give you an exercise through which you can anchor in your truth. For it is only from the perspective that is uniquely yours that you make aligned decisions and more importantly, take aligned action. Action is the physical expression of choice in your world. It is one thing to think a thought, to make a decision in your logical mind, and even in the space of your heartfelt emotions, but acting upon it brings it forth. So for those things that you feel and think you need to do or should do or are being moved to consider, Ask yourself what action backs that up? What, in what way would you be in the world if you already had that belief, that thought, that feeling? And see if that feels like an aligned action for you. But the activity we would leave you with for this month of distillation is one of considering your breath. Many of you have beautiful breathing techniques Many of you feel connected to your breath in very deep and profound ways, but many of you do not consider your breath as you move throughout your day, and that is fine. It is still there for you. It is still alchemizing all around you. It is still supporting you and giving you precious life. If you are in a space where it is convenient to do so, please follow along with us. If not, you can revisit this and use this technique at any time that you feel spun around, that you feel disconnected, that you feel untethered from that which feels comfortable. If you would plant your feet firmly on the ground, 
in whatever way that looks for you, if you're standing, if you're sitting, even if you are just envisioning that for yourself, in a way that you are making your physical structure square and solid. Each of you will have a different way to do that. For many, it is putting your feet on the ground while you are in a sitting position. Imagine dropping a beautiful silver cord down from your spine into the earth. And as it twists and turns and tunnels down, it also sprouts beautiful branches and leaves that glisten. Some of you may hear a chime associated with this for there are frequencies that can connect into music here as well. And that is your personal sacred grounding into where you are now on your planet, certainly in your physical geography. Yes, but more importantly, in your soul alignment, we really want you to come into this space that is uniquely yours. So the first step is to build that beautiful root system, if you will, connecting that down to Mother Earth. And that allows you to be grounded and sustained by the energies that are available to support you. And then imagine a warm silver oil being poured down the space around you. And it is not a smothering liquid. It is very effervescent. It has life force energy within it. It also glistens and makes music for those who can hear with their senses that are beyond the physical. Allow this to slowly trickle from the top of your head where you may know your crown chakra to be, and it covers all the way down your physical body, slowly, gently moving. And allow this to be a beautiful sheen of protection for you. And from this glistening silver substance, you draw forth breath. It acts almost as a second skin through which you can breathe. So you breathe not only from the mechanism of your lungs and your pulmonary system, but you also breathe from this expanded, beautiful, shimmery, warm liquid. And as you do, that which needs to meet your path at this time comes through a filter of truth, comes through a filter of warmth, comes through a filter of authenticity so that it is purified as it reaches you so that when you are using this breath, this energy, this imagining an expansion and a contraction and the power that is engendered by those energies, Allow that to sink up into the rhythm of your pulmonary breath. And imagine that you are breathing in and out, in and out, so that you are fully expanded in that moment. And for some of you, this may bring you into such a frequency of truth that you feel a physical sensation. So if you feel tears, if you feel chills, if you feel a reverberation, know that you are in your home frequency. And as you practice this, you may sit in this space for a moment, for two moments, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, whatever you feel, for any particular period of time refreshes and nourishes you. And when you feel you are ready to step out of that space, you can imagine an evaporation of the silver liquid 
almost as if it is being drawn back and drawn away from you. It is always there for you to call upon it as you need, but allow it to be absorbed, pulled back. And then you can imagine that beautiful cord or root from your spine coming back up from the earth. Again, always available for you if you need it. But you pull all that nourished and replenished, cleansed energy back into your physical biology. Give thanks and have gratitude for that moment. And then you may proceed with whatever it is that you are facing for your day. And we feel that in this exercise, there is empowerment, there is reconnection, and there is truth. And we hope that you find it helpful. Be blessed, dear ones. Know that you are absolutely amazing, beautiful, radiant, powerful creators in this world. And we honor you at this time and thank you for co-creating this moment with us. Be blessed. So as we're looking at that energy of transformation, one of the, um, the aspects of the monthly forecast that sometimes I include, not always, but definitely wanted to bring to your attention this month was the energy of um, an animal totem and a crystal. So these are just ways to expand on the theme to get us more of the information. And sometimes if we hear things through example or metaphor, it settles in with us better. But also the consciousness of this particular animal totem and the consciousness of this particular crystal are willing to assist us through this. So some of you may laugh at the, uh, <laughs> the animal totem and it's coming up in the world in a larger way and i'll talk about that in a minute but it's the energy of the cicada so it's coming up in the world today because we're they're calling it like the cicada apocalypse because two different kinds um if you don't know the cicadas often have a cycle um through which they emerge and that can be 13 years 17 years some do annually but the 13 and the 17 are both hitting this year and that hasn't happened in over 200 years so if you're in an area of the country or planet where you don't experience cicadas that may not mean anything to you but they are very very large very very loud bugs <laughs> and if you're getting two different types it's kind of like oh geez that's gonna wow, it's gonna be something. Um, but that being said, the cicada will come out, literally come out of its shell, step out of its body and leave its old self behind. So that's the energy that we're looking for is that it's been, I wanna say too, for those that uh, they don't hibernate, they're just kind of inactive for a while. For those that are coming out, you know, if you look at a 13 year cycle or a 17 year cycle, I would even say, think of that for yourself, if that's helpful. What were you doing 13 years ago, 17 years ago? Are you ending one of those cycles for yourself? And also the energy of, it's been a minute. Like it's time, it's time for me to, to step into this new way of being. I've waited too long. And, and for those who are aware of cicadas, that exoskeleton that they leave behind, they truly do just step right on out of it. And you can find them hanging on fence posts, trees, sides of buildings, just this dried up old thing that no longer serves them. So what is the dried up thing that no longer serves you that you are ready to step out of? That's the energy of cicada. That's the energy of distillation. So the crystal energy that is asking to come in and assist us this month is Moldavite. So to me, I kind of, <laughs> I don't, I mean, no insult. I kind of call this like the pickle crystal because it's kind of pickle colored. Um, but it's hugely transformational, huge. It is a very powerful, it, it's actually meteoric um, 
it is an aspect or a, uh, an artifact of meteor hitting the earth. It's very transformational. If you think of distillation where you're sending something is bubbling up and coming back down to something different, the coming back down part of Moldavite, I think, connects us back into that. But using that, partnering with that stone, if you have one around you, this is a perfect time to use it in any of your, your rituals. Um, put it around, wear it if you have it as jewelry, but I would also encourage any time with Moldavite, stay grounded. It is a very, I don't wanna say shifty, like it's bad. It has a lot of energy in it. So if you're using it, use it wisely and allow it to enlighten and show for you where your next steps are, where you can transform, where you can go through that distillation for yourself. There's also a, uh, an affirmation that wanted to come through or a mantra, however you want to call it, uh, that came through for this month. And it is, I allow the chemistry of creation to work through me for aligned transformation. I allow the chemistry of creation to work through me for aligned transformation. And then last, but certainly not least, on the list of components of this monthly forecast is the frequency art that I pull through. So this is the frequency of distillation in the way in which we're talking about it in this time period. I like, for me, this looks like, it's interesting that the animal piece comes at a different time than the art when I'm working on this. But to me, this kind of looks like something emerging, maybe some wings on the side. So maybe some cicada energy in here. There um, is also, there's such a power to this piece. When I was creating it, I definitely felt it. It's one, sometimes they come through all at once. Sometimes they come through in fits and starts and I need to walk away from them because whatever's coming through is almost like, it's too loud or it's too big, it's too much and I can't pull it down to contain it. Kind of like you might tell somebody, okay, you're at a 10 right now, I'm gonna need you at about a five. Sometimes I walk away and come back and do it. So this was one that took a couple different iterations for me to, um, to pull it all through. It feels related to the eclipses. It looks, you know, kind of portalesque, if that's a word. And I just really love the power with it, the feeling of transformation with it, but would love to know your thoughts. So leave me a comment below, not just on the art, but on the entire forecast. What are you feeling in the world? How are you walking through what's coming up for you? And uh, again, for the art, if you would like to download a free watermarked copy, you can do so throughout the month of April until the next energy forecast comes up and then I switch them out. I also love being able to offer uh, prints of this because sometimes having it in your physical space can allow you to disconnect from technology. So a lot of times people will put them on their phone or uh, like as a screensaver and connect in with it. That way they can be good journal prompts for you. They can just help you calibrate to your own distillation. But if you would like to have one to print and put up and kind of look at in your space, I offer that as well. So I think that's it. I was checking in. The team is good. I'm good. I hope you're good as well. It's going to be a challenging month, but an empowering month in the same way. So would love to uh, hear from you. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found it helpful. And I will see you next time.